True Dark Web Horror Stories Animated by Ayumar Scary Tales. What's good? How your day going? How your morning? Your evening? Your night? Whenever you're watching this video, I'm not about to talk too much, about to jump right into this mug. Hey, real quick, my bad, real quick before we jump into this though, if you have not watched any of these Dark Web Horror Stories, like the animated ones, I'm gonna let you know now, the ones we have watched so far gets dark. I mean, hey, it is the Dark Web though, but either way it go, shoot, let's see what's going on on Dark Web, dog. Whenever I recall the memory of that night, I get choked on fear. It was the end of December and the snowfall had been pretty heavy. I was sitting in my room, playing games on my computer. My parents were both out. Having the house to myself, I decided to try something spooky. I had recently heard about the dark web from my friends. My best friend Noah said it's a creepy place. He even mentioned a cannibal forum, where interested human meat eaters chat about their insane fantasies. I logged into the Tor browser that helps you to access the deep web. I found some hitmen hiring pages, a few creepy torture videos, and then finally, an explicit site where the content was gruesome and sickly. I was about to go watch a scary movie not finding anything scary enough, when suddenly a link popped up saying, Not for the faint-hearted, click if you dare, exclusive Boy. live. Without thinking, I clicked. I still regret that decision. A dark screen flashed. The word live blinked in the top left corner. For a second, the darkness stayed, and then a white spotlight lit up, flashing a woman standing in the middle of a kitchen. Her hair was put down on the front, hiding her face. She wore a dirty white patient uniform with mudstains. The kitchen was filthy as hell. Piles of dishes were stacked in the sink, cobwebs hanging everywhere. I could see the cockroaches walking all over the walls. What caught my attention most was the old stroller she was holding on to. Mm -hmm. It was like one of those Rosemary's Baby types, only dustier and more unclean. Suddenly, a baby's cry took place. I realized it was coming from the stroller. I couldn't see the baby, but its cry was very hoarse. What the hell is all this? I murmured to myself. When a creepy lullaby began to play in the room, I couldn't tell if it was coming from a music box or some other sound device. The woman started to rock the cradle slowly with the music. It felt so creepy to watch. Her black long hair made it impossible to see her face, yet at the same time I felt she was looking at me. She then started to talk to the baby. I hope it ain't no real baby in that mug or it's just somebody on a dark web just trolling people, but boy, this is dark AFR right now. The, Sight. the more she talked, the baby's cry got louder. No, 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 no. Stop crying. If you don't, I will have to punish you. What? What the F is she saying? Her grip on the candle got stronger and she started rocking it a little too fast, but the baby still kept crying. So, you won't stop, huh? Looks like you've made up your mind. She stopped rocking it and let go of the stroller. She then turned to her right and picked up something from the floor. Once her hands hit the light, I saw what it was. Yes. She was now holding a glass jar with a metal lid on it. The contents of the Spider. jar seemed to be moving. Drops of sweat appeared on my forehead once I figured out what the hell was in that jar. Hundreds of red, big fire ants crawling inside the jar. Bloody hell. Is this woman insane? The woman suddenly parted her hair, revealing her partial face. The camera zoomed onto her face and it gave me nightmares. She had big green eyes bulging out of the eye socket, and her skin was infectious. I'm sure it wasn't makeup because it looked real. Scratches and pus-filled wounds were all over her cheeks. Her face was scratched with nails badly. She smiled and put her finger on oh, her shit. lips. Shh. Time to put the baby to sleep. <laughs> The cry of the baby was almost dying down when she opened the lid of the jar, put her hand in it, and grabbed a handful of fire ants. The ants were probably biting her too, but she didn't even flinch, not for a single second. And then, I watched the horror happen. She started dropping those ants inside the cradle. The no cry got louder with each way. ant. 
I was feeling traumatized. I wanted to quit life, but my fingers were frozen on the keyboard. Is this happening to Liv? Oh no! You just got louder! She screamed no, like she shit. didn't you expect it? that to happen. Everything about her behavior was so psychotic. She smashed the jar on the floor. The sound of breaking glass numbers my ears. Again, she turned to her right and picked something up from the dark corner. This time, she had a blowtorch in her hand. Holy mother of God, is she going to set the stroller on fire? Before I could contemplate it, she torched the stroller. A cloud of smoke, rising flames of fire gobbled the stroller immediately. The cry grew the loudest and then slowly began to die down. The woman laughed. <laughs> Sleep, little angel. Sleep in peace. I couldn't watch it anymore. I left the site, but then a few glitches appeared on the screen and took me to it. another page. It was a chat box, and I saw someone labeled as the mother typing. A text appeared on the screen. Someone is knocking on your door. Why don't you open it? A cold shiver rushed down my spine. With trembling hands, I typed back. Is this a joke? No reply came. I waited in silence. My heart was racing when suddenly loud banging appeared on the main door. The banging soon changed into kicking and then the crazy press of our doorbell. I screamed. Leave me alone or I'm calling 911. I plugged off my computer. It finally turned off and just then hey, you're the already there. stopped too. I, I mean, I don't barely... know how they got there that quick, but uh, unplugging, unplugging the computer ain't gonna do nothing at this point. We already at the crib. They already at the crib. Nah, they got there the fast as hell. The banging stopped too. I could barely breathe. It felt like I was having a heart attack. Ten minutes later, when I finally got my courage back, I slowly walked to the entrance. I peeked outside from the eye hole and only saw the deserted street and dimly lit lamppost. I slowly open the door. The Someone has left a cardboard box on my porch. I opened it and screamed. Ah! There was a mutilated doll of a baby. Ants were crawling on it, and its burnt face made me jump. I threw the box outright and locked the door. The whole night I remained awake until my parents got home. I couldn't tell them about this incident because I knew they won't believe me. I still remember the note I found inside that box. It read, Next time, it won't be a doll. Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying the video. If so, please leave a like. And also, a small percentage of people that watch my videos I'm are telling actually you, subscribed. They are if you want to support this channel and make this channel mm -hmm. reach the 1 million mark, please consider subscribing. It's free and you can change your mind later. Enjoy. Before you say he ain't even subscribed because I'm subscribed on my other channel, dog. Let me go ahead and subscribe, turn my bell on. I'm gonna leave a comment too, cause that help. Man, that first story. Well, wow. At least it wasn't a real baby. How I know. It's free and you can change your mind later. Enjoy. I plopped down to my knees, my face covered in mud. Ha! Loser! I looked up just in time to see a football sailing through the air, headed right for my face. It connected with a sickening thud, and I fell backward, stars glittering in my vision. Hey, dweeb! I groaned as someone hauled me to my feet. It was Joey, the school bully. His friends laughed as he shoved me hard, sending me sprawling back into the mud. Why don't you just go crawl back under your rock and die? You're such a freak. No wonder nobody likes you. They kept laughing and jeering as they walked away, leaving me alone and crying in the mud. I'd had enough. Enough of the bullies, the taunting, the feelings like I was worthless. I stood up, wiped the mud off my face and walked home. I went straight to my room and cried myself to sleep. I was so tired of all of it, of feeling like I had no control over my life. Waking up, I rubbed my eyes as I scrolled through social media. I was sick of it. I was done. I kept browsing the internet, drifting more and more towards the shady side of things. 
forums that discussed how to get revenge on your bullies. You know the deal. That's when I saw it. A forum post that detailed how to gain access to the dark web. I was curious, so I clicked the link. It took me to a website with a list of links. I clicked on the first link that caught my interest. Hitman for Hire. I was skeptical, but I kept reading. The website claimed that they could remove any problematic people in your life, for a price. I thought about my bullies and how good it would feel to see them gone. Besides, one of the packages on the website was free. Problem removal? What does it mean? No further what orders applicable? Shrugging, I hit the order button, followed the instructions, and submitted the names and locations of my bullies. I added anyone and everyone I could think of, even Miss Harlington, who had kept me late after school one time to berate me for my low grades. Finally, it had a field for my name and address. I hesitated for only a moment before putting in my information. What did I have to lose? After pushing submit, however, something strange happened. The text hit list appeared at the top of my page with a list of every person I had submitted. The weird part was that my name was at the bottom, listed as a payment for the job. At that moment, though, my mother called me to dinner, and I didn't have time to think about it. Admittedly, I quickly forgot about the website and went on with my life. Days passed, then weeks. I almost forgot about it. Let me go back real quick, because they gotta come see you to get that payment, huh? They ain't instantly knocking at the door as soon as you click submit. And I didn't have time to think about it. Admittedly, I quickly forgot about the website and went on with my life. Days passed, then weeks. I almost forgot about it until one day I noticed something weird. Joey usually waited for me by the school gates to bully me, but today he was nowhere to be seen. In fact, I didn't see Joey or any of his friends for the rest of the day. It was like they had vanished into thin air. I wondered if they were sick or something, but I didn't see them in the halls or in class. It was like they had just disappeared. A chill ran down my spine as I remembered the website. Surely it couldn't be real, could it? I dismissed the thought and tried to forget about it, but I couldn't shake the feeling that something was wrong. It was only when I entered the class that I found out what was wrong. My teacher stood at her desk, her hair disheveled and her makeup smeared. She looked like she'd been crying. Class, I have some bad news. It appears that Joey, Sarah, and John have passed away. I could feel the blood. Can't buy happiness. Look at that. Hey, Without collecting the pay behind, that easy. Yeah, I'll be careful because I mean they're gonna get your ass next. John have passed away. I could feel the blood drain from my face as she spoke. They were they were dead? But how? It couldn't have been the website. Could it have? And I froze as I looked up at Miss Harlington's disheveled face. She was still alive, wasn't she? That meant it wasn't the website. I sighed with relief and opened my book, thinking that the world had done me a good deed for once. But as I began to read, I heard a sudden gasp and a gurgle. Miss Harlington had frozen in place, her hand still holding a glass of coffee which slowly spilled over the desk and dripped onto the floor. The glass shattered as it hit the ground, and I realized with a start that her eyes were wide open and staring straight ahead. Dead. Screaming, I ran from the classroom, my mind racing. It couldn't be the website. It, it just couldn't be. As I hurried home, however, I suddenly became acutely aware of a vehicle behind me. It had been there for several minutes and seemed to be following me. I quickened my pace, but the car sped up as well. I began to run, but it was of no use. It finally pulled several yards in front of me and stopped. Dude, you gotta the cut. Man he got in a up. car. You gotta hit through yards, dog. But you the know? car sped up as well. Don't go I began straight. To run, but it was of no use. It finally. Be gay, nigga. No, <laughs> I had to go straight and then ride. I went on ride, but it go together. Wait, well, don't go together. <laughs> No, you gotta hit some fences, dog. I began you to run, but it was of no use. It finally pulled several yards in front of me and stopped. Yeah. 
The man who got out of the car was horrifying. There's no other way to put it. He had black hair that stuck out at odd angles like straws and wore a top hat. But what was probably the scariest thing was his mask. It was white with crooked teeth shaped into a mouth, slits for eyes, and painted on eyebrows. Beneath the mouth was a red mark, like a bloody streak. I tried to scream, but nothing came out. I was paralyzed with fear. Payments due. Wh wh what do you mean? Your contract. You ordered a removal, and I delivered. Now it's time for payment. And that's about to be expensive. I, 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 I didn't mean... Now it's time for payment. But, but I, 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 I didn't mean... It doesn't matter what you meant. The contract is binding, and I always collect my payments. No, p please, I, I, I can't... You made your deal with the devil. Now it's time to pay up. I finally... Because it said payment in his name. Meaning, oh, I was right. The payment is him, huh? Yo, this story is crazy, dog. If that's where it's going. Deal with the devil. Now, it's time to pay up. I finally forced my body to move, turning and running. The man was fast, though, and I could hear his footsteps pounding after me, his breathing harsh and ragged. I was running as fast as I could, but it wasn't enough. He tackled me from behind and I hit the ground hard. The last thing I saw was this white grinning mask as he pressed a cloth over my face. I tried to scream, but it was too late. When I awoke, I could see his face leering over me in some sort of basement. He had devices, medical devices, and I was strapped to some sort of table. I tried to scream, but my mouth wouldn't work. All I could do was watch as he approached me with a long, sharp needle before I blacked out again. When I came to, I was back where he'd tackled me. Groaning, I sat up bewildered as I saw several policemen running toward me. <sighs> what the... I'm okay now. As okay as I can be. Apparently, oh. I'd been missing for several months and the police found me after receiving an anonymous tip. I don't know who tipped them off, but I'm just glad to be alive. Well, most of me. I finally understood what type of payment I made. Parts of me are missing. A kidney, my tongue, and something Damn. else I don't want to think about. Probably for sale on the black market. Here we have this large pyramidal Whoa. structure. Whoa! The twist on that story threw me, though. I'm not going to lie. Because at one point, I was thinking, like, yo, he's actually going to off this kid. And then I was like, no, nah, maybe he was T-word, him. I want to say for YouTube, or orturing him. And it felt bad. I was like, I'm going to just go ahead and leave dog right here on the gate or something and call the police. Then I was also thinking he was just tripping. Actually, when he was trying to buy the, uh, the word, I want to say the HM, the two words together. When he was trying to get that, actually, he was talking to the cops, and then they came and got him. That's what I thought it was as well. But damn, like, I'm going to take your organs? Fuck! What in the F? Story number Hey, three. guys. My name is Edward, and I'm a fan of uncovering the secrets of the deep web. Before you think I'm a psychopath, rest assured, I don't like anything that goes on there. I'm not in favor of kidnapping, arms dealing, or red rooms. Nowadays, I'm a white hat hacker. You know, those hackers experts in computer security who are dedicated to sinking those users who enter the deep web with bad intentions. But before I became a computer expert, before I roamed the deep web hunting for potential hijackers, I was just another user of the simplest levels of the deep web. At that time, I also knew a lot about computers, but I was naive and didn't understand the risks I was exposing myself to by being there, and that would have its price. Late 2017, everyone was obsessed with the mystery boxes on the deep web. I was one of them, so I logged on to a site of dubious precedence, left my personal information, paid for the box, and waited patiently for it to arrive. During that time, I was very afraid that it was all a fraud. In the best case scenario, the box would not arrive. That was not what worried me. What scared me was that they would come to kidnap me and my family. I was terrified. I should have never shared my information like that. To my surprise, a few days later, no one kidnapped me. Better yet, the box had arrived. The box was huge, and unlike many others I see on the internet, it was not decorated. 
many people put question marks on them or fill them with spider webs. This was not the case. It was just a huge brown box of poor quality. Today, many people ask me why I didn't film this or upload anything to YouTube. The answer is simple. I'm not interested in fame. I was only interested in opening the box and experiencing what was inside, whether I get ripped off or not. Upon opening it, I must admit I was a little disappointed. In the box were fake skulls, bats, knives, and ropes, all items that a kidnapper might have. But at the same time, you know that they're generic things that everyone could buy anywhere. But in the middle of the things, as if unobtrusively, there was something else. I still don't understand why. The small French blue bell wrapped in a cloth caught my attention. Upon inspecting it, I rang it. It worked perfectly. The bell transmitted something strange to me, a very strange feeling of discomfort, as if I shouldn't have it in my hands. I was about to wrap it again when on its cloth, I noticed that there was something written. Those of you who have justly acquired the bell rejoice, for you've just earned his favor and his blessing. The Watcher will come for you, and I will lead you to feel absolute bliss, the strongest emotions, and the most unattainable pleasures. Somewhat disturbed by what I had just read, I put the bell back where it was and began to put everything in the box. I left the box in the corner of my room and left. Since I was on vacation, I didn't have to go to work. So, with a big smile, I went to make myself something to eat. When I got to the kitchen, I heard a noise coming from the bedroom, and as soon as I turned around to see if something had fallen, I saw it for the first time. The room that I had just left was dark. The lights had gone out on their own, but that wasn't all. I strained my eyes because I knew something was there, and when I realized it, oh I wish I hadn't. Two white dots were more than two feet away. Two white dots were more than two meters above the ground, pointing at me. Were they eyes? No human has eyes like that. When my vision cleared, I began to discover a silhouette. The thing staring at me was human-shaped. He was standing, dressed all in black with a hood that didn't reveal his face. His whole body was covered by a huge closed jacket. Its body was too thin and tall, but it seemed to be attached. This could look like a human, but it was not. I thought about turning and running, but I couldn't. My whole body froze with fear. I couldn't move. Little by little, I began to feel sadder and more desperate. I wanted to cry. I wanted to throw myself out of a window. What was happening to me? These feelings were not mine. It was as if something in the look of that being made me feel this way. I gathered all my energy and ran as far as I could, escaping from that horrible encounter. From that day on, I began to experience a living nightmare. That being was not only in my house, he was everywhere. Wherever he was, I would suddenly start to feel sad and get depressed. When this happened, I knew that if I looked for a dark place, I would see him there, hiding in the shadows, watching me. To make it worse, I was the only person who could see him. I felt like I was going crazy. This went on for several days, and I could never get used to it because it got worse and worse. As he was getting closer and closer, the feelings were getting stronger and stronger. The worst day of all hadn't started so badly. I had fallen asleep that day, which was a great achievement. When I woke up, it was still dark. I was sleeping with all the lights on. But the moment I looked up surprised that they were all off, I knew something oh, bad was about shit. to happen. I tried to move my body to get out of my bed, but something was wrong. My body was not reacting. Something strange was happening again. Suddenly, I could only look ahead to where my closet was, and to my absolute terror, it started to open, revealing a... Just what if he did crack a bill that gave him sleep paralysis every night or multiple nights? I don't know if that's what's playing out, but that's what I was thinking because, yo, that's scary AF. Sleep paralysis is real, dog. And that's some shit I did not like fucking with at all. Like, never ever put that in my life ever again. But just, man, what if? It's happening mm. again. Suddenly, I could only look ahead to where my closet was. And to my absolute terror, it started to open revealing a creepy figure inside. Who are you? Why are you doing this to me? What do you want? 
Or he With no him. answer, the eyes staring at me from inside the closet began to move forward. Wriggling out of the closet, I could see him for the first time without a jacket. His body was gray and full of bandages. His mouth was small, barely visible, and the rest of his body was filled with wounds and craters. Before I could see him any further, he threw himself at me at an inhuman speed, walking at high velocity and contorting his body with every step he took. <laughs> what? <laughs> you know, I'm telling you, dog. Oh my god. What was that? It felt so real. Still mm -hmm. nervous, still trembling with fear, I saw it in the distance. The lights were still all off, just like in my dream. But that being was in the distance, watching me. At that moment, I turned all my hate. It just does not sound far-fetched to me, though. Let me tell you. As far as the bell, it does a little bit. But as far as just the, speaking on the sleep paralysis part, because remember when I ain't going to tell y'all, but remember when I already told y'all mine a million times. But remember when I told y'all mine? I woke up twice. I remember waking up twice, dog. I experienced the shit twice. This nigga's on the second part. I don't know what causes sleep paralysis, but someone needs to find out what so I can never, ever take those steps to get there because that was boy. Or maybe something could be actually going on. If you never experienced sleep paralysis, then you're probably just looking at me like I'm crazy. But, dog, that shit is wild. Let me go back a little bit, So real. Like a lot. Still nervous, still trembling with fear. I saw it in the distance. The lights were still all off, just like in my dream. But that being was in the distance, watching me. At that moment, I turned all my hatred, all my anger into energy and charged towards it. Maybe I could push him away. Maybe I could fight him. Or perhaps he would kill me and all this torture would end at that moment. But nothing happened. When I got to where he was, there was absolutely nothing. It, it can't be. He, he was just here. At what point did I lose sight of him? Ah! And that was my last attempt to fight it. That day, at that moment, I knew I couldn't do anything against him. But also, I saw something else. The bell. Just in case, I had thrown away the box and all its contents a few days before. I was suspicious of that bell, so I made sure it was in there. While looking for the being in the darkness, I had seen it on the floor, in the same place where this being was standing a few seconds before. That day, I understood everything. I would not be able to get rid of it. I would not be able to throw it away or destroy it. Someone else had to take it over. Yo. Someone else would have to acquire it fair and square. The same way I got it, I sold it to another unsuspecting person on the deep web. Selling mystery, <laughs> selling mystery box fast. It's making me think of uh, the Dybbuk box. Was it the Dybbuk box that worked that way? I just learned about it, y'all. Just taught me about it. During the video we watch. But regardless, selling mystery box fast. Hi, I'm selling this awesome mystery box fast. I am willing to pay for the delivery cost if one of y'all, these these are his errors. One of y'all take it off my hand today. He's scared. <laughs> it's one box you would never forgot and will stay with you forever. <laughs> wow. I've been looking for this kind of mystery box for the whole year. I need it. Can I take it? Send in my address through DM. Dude, yes. Thanks. I will send it to you today. <laughs> Get this shit out of here. Overnight. <laughs> oh, oh, shit. And it better kick in as soon as I ship it too, dog. Because hey, I'm not going to sleep until you receive your package. Let me know when you get it, doggy bomb. It's before. That be day, away. I understood everything. I would not be able to get rid of it. I would not be able to throw it away or destroy it. Someone else had to take it over. Someone else would have to acquire it fair and square. The same way I got it. I sold it to another unsuspecting person on the deep web. Surely it had reached another curious man Said like me, is. who will send it to someone else, or... I don't want to think about what this being will do to him, because he would have done it to me, too. From that day on, my interest in the deep web did not go away, but it intensified. I never tried to find out anything about that bell. I felt that if I looked for it, I would attract that being again. I agree. What I did look for were ways to protect people from these traps. I, I ended like, up I becoming like. an expert in computer security in these five arduous years. And today, I dedicate myself to patrolling the deep web, hacking those who are doing something bad, but scaring the unwary kids who don't know what they're doing. They're afraid of me, but I know I'm protecting them. 
from themselves. Damn. I do like the fact that it got to be sent fair and square, though. You do have to want it. So, hey, you can't just whoop, ship it to nobody, whatever. So, you know what you're getting yourself into if you want this box. But, yo, I'm about to go ahead and get up out of here and enjoy my day. Hey, you do the same thing. Enjoy your day, your morning, your evening, your night. Hey, also, click the like button for me. I appreciate it. You can sub, turn the bell on. You can leave a comment, do all that amazing stuff. <laughs> hey, I'm out, man. Enjoy your day.